All right, so I was where we left off. I was like violently slapping myself, and uh, Kim had a reaction to that. But I was like, "Damn it, Kim! I'm just on the verge of cracking this whole case wide open." I think we may have these. Lieutenant whispers, then gives the suspect a short glance. Do you think he did it? He nods. We have nothing to this in a day. He has a crooked little smile. This is good, Lieutenant Dufeta. We just need a confession first. Then maybe a solid motive later. How do you think the question is going? Good, he nods. We're doing very good. He wants to confess. I, I can see that. We just need to pile it on a little more. The more we have on him, the closer he is. You hear that? He thinks you're this close. I'm trying to get him to confess. Yes, good going. That should be our first priority. I'm slapping myself to get ideas. I can see that, yes, I'm not judging. What am I missing? What haven't I done? But I can think of one thing, the gun. He smiles very politely. We should pick it up and discuss it in front of him. Make a show of it. Yes, sire, make a production of the examination. Okay, let's do this. Remember, Lieutenant whispers, he wants to tell us. He doesn't want to help us. It needs to look like we already have everything. There is palpable excitement in his tone. He likes him for this a lot but there's something more too he thinks the deserter has more than just his case in him 44 years here you think he has more more than this case oh yes he nods and he hasn't spoken to anybody in a long time if we get him open who knows what will pour out pat him on the back here we go! I just have spare points lying around at this point. Yeah. I could use a few things to help out with braining people. Let's see. Point to drama. Point to logic. I was gonna put a point to empathy. Because I could use some empathy. It is a pretty high stat already. Holy shit, it's a high stat right now. Wow. Four from items. But I don't want to... If, if a white check happens, I'm fucked. So I don't, I don't want to spend the last point. It's already high, I guess. But this is a good time, since, we're, since the game seems to be ending-ish, that I should spend my spare points a bit. Got my logic. Rhetoric. Those are kind of the main ones. Logic's kind of lower, I guess, so... Why not? Minions of capital. What do you want? Pick up the gun lying in the sand. His gaze follows your motions. The rifle feels surprisingly light in your hand. Frames stocked and patched in places with tape and wire. Still warm from his parched hands. Not the metal. The metal is ice cold. This weapon, ha weapon has been modified several times. Inspect it closer. The rifle's in a shabby state. Like a crutch that's seen too much travel. Hieroglyphs are embossed into the forearm made of walnut. They say... Tringang 4.46, Xinyao, commun Commune, for Safra, and for all mankind. I know Ceres. This is a Vulgate Ceres, you can barely intuit the words. Noah's stretching it. Look at the butt of the gun. On the butt you see Vespertine writing. Burnt into the wood. Tringang 4.46 millimeter, made in Xinyao. It's as he said, it's a Triangong 
Made in Senyao. No one said that it has to be a Bela Margrave. The lieutenant does not take his eyes off the old man. We were just guessing. From ballistics, it could easily have been a Trian Gong too. Doesn't matter if it was made in Sanitsin in in Shanti Shanti. All it has to do is use jacketed ammunition. And it does. This uses jacketed ammunition, 4.46. The right time and the the right type and the right caliber. Lieutenant nods, glancing at the gun. He's liking this. The rifle has been patched and modified several times. I wonder how old it is. The old man does not answer. He just stares in front of him. Stow the gun. The old man keeps it, keeps following your motions with his gaze. His left arm twitches suddenly. Some kind of involuntary response? Something slightly off with his motorics. This looks very much like the murder weapon. It can be used against him later. One more time, Mr. Dross. The Colonel. We need to talk about you killing him. Petty Burgoy's Law. He snorts and spits. This is all you care about, right? The one thing in the world for you types. A drop of blood in the saliva. That's right. Pile it all on him now. Three should do it. Maybe four. There were Maybells behind the victim's window. Damn Maybells. He looks at the blossoming field behind you. A whole island is turning white with them. He seems tender suddenly. Nostalgic even. A strange mood spring. Swing. So many this year too. The spring is coming. No. It's already here. Wash the filth away. I haven't seen these flowers anywhere else in Mardenes, only here. They blossom on the islets before. We fertilize them with our blood. He looks to the water. Resurrection was snow white in May before they ruined it. South, the Bay of Mardenes is dotted with little freckles of islets turning green with white flowers and white snow. The coast too, before they piled their containers on top of it. Filled with broken, useless trash for fat-fingered bourgeois children to play with. You must get around a lot to stay undetected all these years. The lieutenant's voice is soft, friendly. Do you know any secret paths? Pinball workshops? I may. Curious tremor passes his face. A woman called Clashe. Ring any bells? These dried flowers were behind her window. Cloche. He knows her, but hadn't heard the name. Yes, Cloche. You hadn't heard her name, had you? My ears don't reach the city. You know her, right? She had intimate relations with the victim, the mercenary. With the victim. He turns his sight from the whitening of field of flowers and falls silent. Then the muscles in his jaw twitch. A spasm. There is a remark- There is a small tremble. Looks like a smile. A crooked smile. It isn't quite voluntary. He's about to burst. I wonder, what, I wonder what brand of boots you're wearing. Everything is brands with you individualists. Who cares what brand my shoes are? Sansa. He looks at his running shoes, covered in mud. Some shit. Show me the soles, please, Mr. Dross. Fucking imbecile. The old man stretches out his leg. A black and white spiral pattern covers the sole of the worn out old running shoes on his feet. The maker is called San Sirik, and the size is 42 to 44. These are not the unusual horizontal pattern soles you saw in the dust on the floor of the hidden room. They do, however, seem to be at the same size. The size fits, but not the sole. 
lieutenant comes to the same conclusion. Wait, maybe it's simpler than that. Sire, he doesn't have to be wearing them right now. People can change shoes. It doesn't mean that you weren't there, near the room the victim died in, sneaking around. Racking those brains, are you? He squints at you, black pearls gleaming with hatred. Desperate to report something back to your masters. They must have really loved that dead fuck. Lieutenant gives you a, side, a quick sideways glance and nods to acknowledge. The prints were his. You can see it in those eyes. He can't keep them from flickering. Looking for something. The old man stares at his old, his own prints in the ash around the fire. Silent suddenly. Some strange process within him. A gush of wind, seagulls in the distance. You've almost got him. Just a last little push. I don't need your cooperation, I've got this. Show him the Triangong 446. Heh. <laughs> Not a lot of guns around that use military grade ammunition, are there? It's a real gun. He points to the lieutenant's holster. Not like the little musketeer pistols. I've seen you prance around with those, jumping hoops for the liberals. You look like imbeciles. Why don't you ask them to give you real weapons? He chortles. Going against automatic rifles, these toy guns. Of course you got those boys killed. Damn, he saw you. He's watched it happen. He would have had a good view of the tribunal from here. It's not just empty boasting. So he saw you. Okay, so what? Don't let it divert you. Stop changing the suspect. We have the murder weapon. You know what? Lieutenant looks at it. At it. The weapon. Looks at it. The weapon. Dem okay, look. Care of that. The, the, the lieutenant looks at the weapon demonstratively. You're right. I'm convinced this made the shot. Should we call it? Dramatically ask. You think we have the murder weapon? 4.46 jacketed ammunition, modified for range. He lists. We have it. This is it. I'm calling it. We have the murder weapon. Ba boom! Good. Lieutenant takes out his notebook and draws a single line. This feels good, doesn't it? Tying things up like this. When you have the murder weapon, you have the killer. This list is certainly getting shorter. Now three days are empty. Strangely effective to think about all those days just kind of clearing out. Oh my god, this I'm always caught up by how long this task list is. This was my task list for the first day of the game? Like, look how fucking infinite this list is. Oh wait, no, that's Monday and Tuesday. Yeah. Only one of each of the headings existed at a time, so Monday reset up to here, so Monday and Tuesday merged together. Still, like, I haven't... God damn. You lose track of how much has happened in this game. Been busy. I still have my original goal of find booze, which also, it's gonna fucking die there. <laughs> Goodbye. Murder. The old man does not say anymore. He just glances into the reeds, then twitches once more. He suddenly jerks to life. You know who he was. A coalition trained murderer, armored and armed. He wasn't human. The blunt end of a hammer, dripped, dripping with blood. He was a killer. But he was still under the protection of the law. Beating us to the ground, moaning with joy. He breathes in with strange animation. You hounds get so thorough with the company trained killer dies. I haven't seen you on this coast for 40 years, you know. Maybe I should have killed one sooner. Got your attention. He looks you dead in the eye, people shaking. Now you stop beating druggies and prostitutes in your basement. Now you come to investigate. 
Now when they die by the hundreds. Not when they die by the hundreds. He breathes through flared nostrils. This is it. Shot him, shot him. Say shot him, not killed him. So you shot him. Oh, the inhumanity. He closes his black eyes. One paramilitary less in Revachol. You can almost see him squeeze a tear out of his eye. His fists begin to tremble from the anger. Lieutenant raises his right arm to hush you. While the lieutenant listens, holding his breath. Hold your breath. <laughs> I had them in my sights, both of them. Him and the whore. I was breathing with them, in phase. And I pulled the trigger and flew on the air until I landed in his mouth. He begins to smile. I don't think I had a shot like that in me anymore. I did. I saw him kneel there with his mouth full of death and that stupid look on his face. The smile quivers. His dick still in her. Then what? Nothing. I went to sleep. Next morning there were Maybells everywhere. The world was white, or what's left of it anyway. My last spring here. I knew the fascists would come to avenge their own. And so they did. The lieutenant just looks at him for one, maybe two seconds, then breaks the silence. Mr. Dross, are you aware you're confessing to murder? Yes. A single word is all he gives. The, the, the lieutenant takes out his notebook slowly, very slowly. And you were looking at them, the victim and a young woman, having sex through the scope of your rifle at that night before you shot them. The old man nods. Why? Because that's what they were doing. He shrugs, then smacks his lips. The motive. This is where the motive is going to come from. I don't understand. Do you, detective? I don't understand this part. Why were you looking at them that light that night? I'm always looking. He cocks his head to the side, then turns his eyes to the city. Another tremor passes his left side, lower in intensity. Are you always looking through the scope of your rifle? He explains. I'm just trying to understand. A rifle scope has the best magnification. And if you don't like it, click. You pull the trigger. Yes. He looks you in the eye. Think of it as a form of critique. <laughs> Jesus. He will not stop now. These dialectical materialist types never do. Exploit it. You got him going. Connect every little piece now. Wrap this up like a gift. What specifically did you not like about what you saw the night of the murder? Them fucking. He looks at the charred wood. I didn't like that. So you were jealous? Jealousy is a reactionary concept. I didn't like the Reaver enjoying himself, drugged out, soothed in the arms of a young woman. I wanted him to die, so he could not enjoy life anymore. For him to stop reacting to stimuli, to be broken off from the world, cordoned into darkness. And I wanted her to see his head explode. He nods. That too. She should know better than to hold a child murderer between her thighs. I knew he'd be there for one more second, writhing. That's all it takes for the bullet to reach his head. He squints. Now that I think of it, I wasn't aiming for his mouth. I wanted his brains to spill out on her. But you can't have everything. So this entire case kind of happened just because his bullet drifted ever so slightly and didn't cause a giant, gory, easily observable mess. Because he fired a bullet that was so hard to find that I had to do like some next level uh, 
interfacing talent checks on a corpse in a fridge after noticing a specific hole that went unnoticed for an entire week at that point. Because they were able to frame it as a hanging. You can't have everything. This man has seen past her, like you did. The caliber of bullet he used does not do that kind of damage. How long have you been- how long had you been watching her? Since she came to Martinez. I saw her sneaking in the reeds early in the morning, behind the Feld building. It was dark, still winter. She didn't have her skimpy outfit on then, just a spot in the light- in the night, moving. That's the Feld building on the coast? What was she doing there? Hiding something in the water. She had a fag after she'd done it. I was up in the ruins there. She couldn't see me, but I could see her. Smoking. She was nervous, but not, not scared. What do you think she hid there? Her passport. A ticket to Villiers. He coughs. And from there, to Casher Broom. In the free state of Seminine, hidden away at the edge of the earth, near the pale. Some kind of hidden container on the coast? You looked into it? Yes, after she'd gone. It was a submersible. Well made, actually. Sloppy. We should have gotten her to tell us all about this. The lieutenant mutters to himself. Did you take the documents? No. I put them back. Why should I take them? I'm not going to fall. He seemed confused momentarily, or... I mean... Moving on. Did you continue watching her after this? I did. He almost smiles. She had a face like an archipelago, with those birthmarks, with the body hard and lean and bruised all over. Black and yellow. I could see she's taken a beating. I could see who she was, too. He nods. A spook on the run. Reva shows the cloaca of a capital now. All the bagmen and arm dealers are end up here. To do drugs and have sex like animals. You could tell she was a spook from the documents. She had different color hair from the photo and glasses. Forged. Some sordid bourgeois affair. I've heard about this kind of thing on the radio. He's setting it up for you. The bruises. You can't make that out in a scope. And you can see her bruises through the scope of her rifle? You can't see bruises in a scope. It's just a blur. He shakes his silver gray head. How does he know those minute details about her- about the body? It's, it's quickly comes to you. It quickly comes to you. The bruises on her body. Any chance you've seen them through a hole in a wall? Oh yes. He smacks his lips, cutting those drugs of hers into little lines with a knife, masturbating. Did you make that hole? With a clip point knife. Good for listening in, too. For hearing the moaning and the snorts. Ever see her through a window? On a roof? Like that, too. Yes. He nods. Bending like a bow against the glass. You've been through the secret route behind the whirling in rags. Those were your footprints there. You just change your shoes. I've been through all of Martinez, every nook and cranny. And that too. Yes, that too. He shakes his head, almost in awe. The things they did in that little room. What she'd do to feel good, he explains. Funny the way light works. You turn it on inside, and it gets so dark that you can't see a man looking in. 
I learned that in the twenties, when they were still hunting me. I've seen people do some shit, but... He keeps shaking his head. Those two took the cake. You hear the familiar scribble of the lieutenant's pen. A quick glance at you. Then at the man. How did you get in there? The hidden pin bottle workshop. I can just walk in there now, after a good wash. I told you, they think I'm anti an antisocial. Closing hour is a good time. The kitchen's empty. You had to open the steel door in the kitchen? How? I got that open a long time ago. Some bourgeois game merchant lived there. I don't know, 15 years ago? He left spare keys all over and I took one. Then I saw her turn on the light. On, I then I saw her turn the light on one night in my scope. He points towards the whirling in rags. And he found her... He found use for it. A spare key. Like the one hanging behind the union box window. Did you have feelings for that woman? This. He sighs. There's nothing to hold on to. Only this. It's not enough. The coals of his eyes glisten suddenly, like stones dripping with water. Is he crying? Man needs to feel something else. In this fight, it helps if you, keep, if you have your eye on something there. He looks to the city. It's weakness, I know. There have been others? Yes, over the years. It's not unproletarian to feel something. Was that why you left the dried flowers behind her window? No. He starts to shake his head again, a sunflower on a withered stalk. Why then? I don't really know. I was there one night and she was crying. Like a child, in the corner of her room, on the floor, like she does sometimes. When was this? The day after I'd killed him. And you brought her Maybells? Yes. He looks at the charred logs. I don't know why I do the things I do anymore. You wanted to console her? Maybe. He lowers his head and just stares at the logs. I told you, I have holes in my brain now. I wouldn't just sit here waiting for you. If you came ten years ago, I would have killed you. He wipes his eye. In the silence, the lieutenant draws a line in his notes, then nods at you once more. So in conclusion, it wasn't about him. It was about her. Her. He repeats, staring at the ashes, then the reeds. There's a twitch in the corner of his eye. We're ending this game on a parasocial relationship. That is not the direction I thought we'd go in, because elements of like fame and so on weren't coming up at all. So that like that aspect of it usually like that whole aspect wasn't really ever coming up. But no, we have the specific outcome of a somebody who has been completely alone for like forty years and continually spies on people. And he develops these relationships with these people that don't know he exists. And this entire game was kind of, like, the entire murder was basically encouraged, sure, by some of his political beliefs and some of his anger at this, what was, to, what, who was uh, the guy who was a terrible man, but a lot of it comes down to this, like, parasocial connection he had with this woman that exists on the other side of his scope. That he's been watching through holes in the wall, listening to her masturbate and do drugs consoling her with flowers, all these things. She didn't just want to kill him. He didn't just want to kill the, the mercenary. He wanted to make her pay. The lieutenant nods at you in acknowledgement. The old man looks at you suddenly, remembering something. Where is she, that cliché? 
I haven't seen her there for days. She got away, but she let us hear first. She figured out someone was watching her from the seafront. The sea fort. Gone. He looks at the city and nods. I knew it. She kept staring into the scope this last week. At the island. Like she knew. He sighs. She'd look. At night. Crying or smoking on the roof. Staring right at me. He adds. To no one in particular. It doesn't matter. Midtown. Across the Bay of Revachon. Cold rain falls on 40-story towers. Above them, Lausanne Central Aerodrome. A cocoon suspended in the gray sky by a web of suspending wire, suspension wiring encircled by hybrid aircraft. Look north. On the platform of a young... On the platform, a young woman is withdrawing from amphetamines, barbiturates, and alcohol. Yet still she smiles among the crowd, among the great ghosts of the city she's leaving. For another, far south. Smaller, distant, hidden. Not like the great chandelier she sees sparkle in the spring air below her. Streets and towers, tenements and water. And across it, a dark strip of ruins barely visible, if she didn't squint her eyes. He knew she knows. She was looking at the island, figuring it out day by day, cigarette by spit cigarette. We could get more. Lieutenant uses the opportunity to tell you, in a lowered voice. We've got some talking. Who knows what he's seen and done over the years? Been looking at anything else you haven't liked? A tragic cut of me. Comedy. He shakes to life. Druggies, prostitute, prostitutes, and rentiers. A strange little engine seems to fire up in him again. It straightens his back. The familiar putt-putt-putt of hatred. More specifically? Specifically, the whole city is a, is a charnel house. Stripped clean and draped in neon. But Martinez... He shakes his head in grave disgust. Martinez is the worst. How come? Because of the racists. Everyone is racist in Martinez. It's their favorite thing to do in the whole world, listening to race-themed radio shows. In the ruins. In the lorries. He points inland. Pumped full of steroids and radio rubber shells, 92. Race this, race that. It's all sanctioned by that social democratic union and the farce of a social democrat who runs it. Mr. Clare? Yes. The fly larva in his container. He let some nihilistic advertising yuppies erect a statue of Philippa III, a syphilitic, a syphilitic murderer on the town square, to spit on the working class. Anything more? Or, yeah, don't interrupt. Not since the serfs of ancient Paracanassus has history produced a more inert social class than the Martinez proletariat. The rest of Ravishol at least pretends to rebuild. These people still live in ruins. Intense. Like animals. He points to the church. Like what those boom boom morons on the ice. A pity they didn't drown in that tent of theirs. He keeps shaking his head with sorrow from the sight he missed. That all? The worst of them is the blood-drenched Sur... Sucreant. Sucreant. Let's learn a word. It's bit, you know, we have tra we have traditions to uphold. Sucrion. Sucrion. Wow, one of the top results is explaining vampires? <laughs> the fuck? Is it a picture of Cersei Ronan? The fuck am I getting here? 
A Sukriant, or a Luguru, is a type of vampire witch from the Car Caribbean folklore. Said to be live as an old woman during the day, but to slough off her skin and turn into a fireball at night in order to fly through the air and sneak into the houses of sleeping individuals in order to suck their blood. That actually might be what he means. <laughs> I thought I was getting like a crazy third party fantasy version, but that actually might be the real... That, 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 that might be what he means when he's describing her. It seems fitting. That's Sukriant on a yacht, licking her lips. The old whore's gone now. The gun-toting por uh, porcelain men are dead. So actually, no. The worst is that old cock parading around in his uniform, throwing balls all day. It's not enough that the racists and liberals are dancing on our graves. The old loyalist ghouls still parade in the ruins, too. Every morning he's there. Or the parasites he fought to protect are off in Ozone, or Corient Morain, or some other island they've built their palaces on, feeding on drugs and having sex with their own children. That's all the rich really want. Sex with their own children. Throughout history, even the royal bloodline of the suzerain. It's all just an excuse for them to have sordid sex. At least that old cunt Frissel is now dead. Okay. <laughs> well, the person you're talking about is dead. I don't remember if that's what you mean by Frissel or not. Or if that's another person. That might be reference to a royal line. Alright. I have some questions about this. We did good when we pushed him onto the, the horse car. Until in his thirties, those disco whores. He breathes in, his breath heavy with hatred. You cannot make out a single word. The disco whores are too much. Hatred shuts down his brain's language center, leaving only nonsensical sputter. There was something about a statue, a nihilistic advertising agency people? Might be worth investigating. Yeah, we, we know about the statue, people. And the Sukriant on... And the Sukriant on her yacht. Joyce? Probably? Yeah, I, was, I thought that was pretty clear. Disco? Whores? Whores. Is all, is all he says. Even the word has to be pushed through his teeth with great force. The rage seethes too hard. There was something about the statue on the roundabout and syphilis? Syphilis is a disease Philippa II contracted in a whorehouse. He fires quickly. The statue is an abomination. Abomination. The bacteria entered his brain and made him squander trillions of sp on sparkling wine. Cocainum and monuments of himself. His son, Philip III, the insane, contracted syphilis in the womb. He breathes in with a wheeze of hatred. That is technically possible, although Philip III was not actually syphilitic. He was just mad. And he still went on to govern Ravishol for 25 years. We lost two million lives toppling that mode of government, and those grotesque statues too. Hundreds of them. But it's still there. What's a keen remark? He sputters. Yes, it is, isn't it? It's still there. Do you know? Do you want? Do you know why? Because cynical advertising yuppies erected a deconstructed version of it. That's right. Some advertising cockroaches erected a cynical deconstruction of it. We tore it down with honest working-class plastic explosives, and there it is again. He shakes his head in disgust. Art is a bourgeois establishment. It's an affront to humanity. Every gallery should be bulldozed, and the artists should all be given 30 years of hard labor in, your, in Yoko Kata. Eh... Uh. You're losing me, buddy. Wait, the bullet hole in Philippa's heart. The statue had been shot. That was him. It had to be. He's already proven capable of taking far more complicated shot from here. Forget about that. Something much more noteworthy goes off in your brain. Could it not have been that...
Actually, it was not deconstructed so much as captured in the moment of the explosion. What are you talking about? The ancient communard cocks his head. It's not a monument to Philippa III anymore. It's a monument to the monument of Philippa III exploding. What is this madness? A dim light comes on in his eyes. It's true. They took the moment of its destruction and froze it in time. So essentially, it's a monument to what they did. They destroyed it. And, they, and the artist chose to take that exact moment, the destruction itself, and make, and make that a monument. I don't know if that was necessarily like the, the, their intention or whatever, but that's the result, essentially. Lieutenant Two has cocked his head and is looking at you with a strange expression. It's not madness. It's a monument to what you did. To your program of destatuing Revishal. So you're saying it's a communist monument now. Not only. Yes, and furthermore, the Design Bureau people are probably left-wing too. They often are. We did always have the prettiest posters. Maybe you're right. His eyes fill with understanding. That is a dialectics work. But understanding this, art is still a bourgeois institution. He coughs, then adds in a gravelly voice, and it should all still be sent to Yokokata. Yeah, it's gonna, you know, you're gonna, I'm not gonna, no. I don't know about that, could we not? Don't be squeamish, it is commonplace to relocate the workforce as the need arises. All nations do it, it's called settlement. He shakes his head and mumbles, some kind of bourgeois art fascist. Okay. Art fascism is a fucking oxymoron. <laughs> that doesn't work. That super doesn't work. You mentioned the Union and Social Democratic, and Mr. Clare is a farce of a Social Democrat. Another hideous disappointment. He pokes at the ash. Unions are the real enemy. The true enemy of the proletariat. Placating the masses. Disappointment. So personal. He displays a familiarity with the Union's top brass. Who's a disappointment, Everard Clare? That deformed toad. I wouldn't expect him to wipe his own ass. I mean the brains of the operation, the smart one. Edgar. I ne we never met Edgar in the entire game, did we? You mean Edgar, Edvard's brother. The old man chortles with a nod. He talks a big game about uprising and social base. They must have sent the smart one to some university in Le Jardin where it's all alienation, this and hegemony, that. You've talked to Edgar? First against the wall with him. He stopped poking at the ash now, just shakes his head. The Clares wouldn't miss a man hidden in their own backyard. Not all this time. Nothing happens in Martinez without them knowing. Of course. Maybe the Clares asked him to. Have you approached them? I haven't approached anyone I've hid. It was Edgar who came to me. How did he know where you were, you were here? He didn't just stumble in like an oaf. He nods to you. He figured it out. Some kids told him about the monster on the island. I told you, he has brains. He points to the path leading to the tower. Stepped right off the boat and walked down where you came. I even kept the door open for him. Thought he was a man of the left, wouldn't rat me out. He shrugs. I was right about one of those things. When was this? Twenty years ago. Neither of them could walk. Now, could they? They were less fat then. That's around the time the Clares came to power. What'd you talk about? Edgar did the talking. Paid his respects. Like I wore a fossil in a uniform. Offered platitudes about the struggle. Flaunted his pink degree. Even quoted Mazov. Never trust a social democrat who quotes Mazov. He suddenly remembers. Oh, and charity too. They love their charity. 
offered me blankets and social housing. I still have the gas cooker he brought. And he let you be here. Let me be here. He looks around. The Saw is an unlawful successor to the commune of Revachol. We took this fortification from the loyalists. Even the Clares understand this. They let him be there. Understanding was a courtesy. But why such a courtesy? Mr. Dross, did you kill the Crenell mercenary for the Clares to incite a riot? You know why I killed that fucker, Droit? He shakes his head. As to Edgar, I'm not doing anything for that swine again. Again? What have you done for Edgar before? Tried teaching him some Mazovian socioeconomics. They didn't stick. We parted ways. He coughs. Okay. He didn't do the hanged man for them, but he's insinuating something. There is more here, you can feel it. He was not outright lying, but almost. Legendary logic, but I have two pluses from shooting the statue and talking to Everett before. What was the deal between him and Edgar? Don't don't snake eyes me now, come on. Twenty The connection comes to you. Like a splash of cold water. Dark, cold water. Twenty years ago, when you met Edgar, the Clares didn't run the Union yet, did they? Heh. <laughs> a sputter from the old man. He acknowledges it. Here we go, a twist behind the dark bend. Who did? That bourgeois cow. Tiffane Holly was her name. He narrows his eyes. Licked the rich man's hand every time he came to town. Never has seen a labor leader so hot on mutual cooperation. And money. She liked that too. That Holly was a real bridge builder and a deal maker. His eyes glistened suddenly with hatred. She was also a woman, wasn't she? Like that cloche. She was. And she was real soft on the money men. Had a Barbara Moskova bag over her shoulder that she liked to bring to work. And then she just... disappeared. Called in, they say. On the eve of battle. Ran away. Vanished like a piss stain. He squints and smiles at the black logs. No. That's not quite it, is it? Did she? Lieutenant's voice is calm. They say her daughter called in. Not her, personally. But that wasn't really her daughter, was it? No. I guess it was not. You could swear you see the embers glow again under his eyes on the dust. Edgar had someone made the call. Why is that, Mr. Dross? She couldn't make the call herself. Here it is. The bend in the river. Why? Because she was dead. Just say nothing. The cow caught a bullet in her right lung. Fell into the canal, grasping her tit and drowned. Or bled. Hard to say. It was a sloppy job and a moving target. She was going home. Waddling, dressed in yellow, drunk like she often was. The ruins were black around her and she had a yellow leather bag under her arm. She tried to cross the canal. Heading home to Grand Koran or Bentecourt, some place like that. Where they built those new battlements for the people who flourish in the hell around her. And the ruins. You shot her. Someone shot her. He shrugs. His eyes grow cold suddenly. Or maybe the cow just fell. My memory's full of holes. All I know is... Nothing changed. Not in the material base. Not in the hegemony. There was no uprising. Just words. The union fizzled. Sogged. Nothing came of it. Nothing. Edgar didn't keep his part of the deal. That's not even close to the right voice. I'm losing my mind a little bit doing this for this, for this long. <laughs> Edgar didn't keep his part of the deal. Heh. <laughs> a sputter again, nothing more. If you were to testify to this, give the RCM something on Edgar. You could walk. Lieutenant says in a voice even calmer, as if it were nothing at all. 
We could strike everything you've done and process you as a prisoner of war. You were in a war. You were on assignment. We could even extradite you to the Samaran People's Republic. A degenerate worker's state. Goat shit. No thank you. I'm River Sholian. He spits. My days are short. I will, I will rot away here in a moral intern cell. I will not testify to anything. But you did do it. I saw it happen. And I liked it. That's all I have to say. I didn't live and fight for 40 years to end up with a, as a collaborationist. I've heard it on Channel 8. 40 a.m. Revishal, Radio Revishal Late Night. Secret test complete. Ba -bum. <laughs> everyone is a blobber in this world. Everyone betrays everyone. They're all already locked up for betrayal. The best ones, the ones with heart, were slaughtered, trampled. He looks to the city. The same old freezing hatred. The blood-drenched uh, Sukrant on the boat. Where's a Sukrant? A Sukrant, a bloodsucker, a rich whore on a boat. Oh, you mean Joyce? Yeah, <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, that hurt. I know her. <laughs> he nods. Women like her feed on the life energy of young, working-class men, and they let her. I can't believe the inert lumpen out there. They just let her drive her little boat like that. No violence. Not even a robbery. The working class has lost their appetite for justice. His voice trails off in disappointment. If only he had the ammunition. That's what he's thinking about. So I was right there. It is a blood-sucking creature. By the cock parading in his colorful uni uniform, you mean Renee? Every fucking morning for 34 years. He grinds his teeth in rage, throwing that ball. One ball against another. I've always loathed that game. That is not a working class game. I don't care what they say on Radio June. How are you going to determine what is and isn't a working class game? Those are categorized now? It's not like it especially requires you to be rich in order to do it. You just need to have some balls. That's like step one. That's one level above ga games you play with sticks. And when you're really like extra level, when you want to really splurge as a working class citizen, you can have a game that has sticks and balls. Whoa. Royalist ghouls play it like it was life itself. Click clack. He makes the sounds of balls connecting across the water each day. And that's uniform, like a parrot's plumage. I won't even mention that he's a traitor to his race. A pet tank maniac race traitor. Just nod. I'd remember him. He points to his black eye. I'd remember him from Le Noch. Not him personally, his make and model. There were tens of thousands of them. I, th I thought we took them all out before the liberals came to their rescue. We missed one. With a shaky figure, finger, he points to the city, towards the crater near the plaza, where a lonely pine tree, tree stands. That one. There doesn't seem to be a single person under the pine today. Not even Gaston. Alone. There's no one there. Fat and plump like a pheasant. He does not hear you, just begging to be popped off. A grin sketches across his face, and he says very softly, Please, Mr. Dross, shoot me. You'd like to kill him? A smile lingers. Not yet. I like to look at him, strut around, place the crosshair on his medals, right on his face, and then just fiddle the trigger. Think about it. Let the bonbon melt in my mouth. Save the treat for later. Lieutenant asks cheerfully. He is a juicy bonbon, that one. A real treat for the black day, the blackest. When I put the gun in my own mouth, I think, no, don't waste it. Put this lead in the cock, Rene, for the boys he killed. And then I look at him with the, throw those balls and suddenly feel. He 
lets out a wistful sigh. Better. I even hid one bullet so I'd always have one. For him. The line on his face straightens as he looks inland. Haven't seen him around lately, strutting around. Must be down with arthritis. I hope it hurts like hell. I hope he sweats blood. Man, frenemies. Parasocial frenemies. He's been after this guy for so long that he's literally planning his murder and keeping a bullet around. What a terrifying concept to think about that somebody is like intimately aware of your daily schedule and is specifically planning your demise on a very and has like a very personal grudge against you and you have no fucking clue that they exist. And they can snipe you in public. What a fucking nightmare this guy didn't even ever get to learn that he was living. Renee is dead. He died of old age a couple days ago. No. Yes. The old communist looks at you, his blackberry eyes shaking in disbelief. I waited too long. I wanted- I waited too long and now he's dead. I'm sorry, Mr. Dross. Lieutenant says softly. I understand you knew him for a long time. They're all dead now. He just shakes his head. Fuck it. If he really wanted to kill him so bad, he would have done. There must have been a thousand black days on these islands. His health ailing. You had a thousand chances to kill him. And I blew them all. What does it matter now? He's gone. Ancient dust. He reminded him of himself. The same hatred. The same... You try to think of something else, but no, it's just hatred. You cared about him. A little flash of anger. All human beings care about each other. I cared for seeing head explode. And now... God damn this world. I'm sorry. Fuck you. The old communard says. Staring at the ground, seemingly on the island you're on. Are you okay, Mr. Dross? To go on? You think I haven't seen people die? It's all I've seen them do. Fuck and die. All the other plans we had. To love, to colonize the Pale. It's all fucked. How the fuck are you going to colonize the Pale? That sounds like it's really out of bounds. He's not okay. This is just another black day. In a row of black days. Something strange is keeping him together. Making him endure. An idea. Dole did my grown-ups. The radio towers and leaflets. In beautiful print, when he was still a teenager, everything is possible if we fight. And then he lost. So did they all.